Intel has been on a steady decline for years, unable to compete with the pace of innovation from AMD and Apple, no matter how much their marketing department tries to convince you otherwise. In the laptop space specifically, Intel now no longer represents innovation. Instead, Intel-powered laptops now represent annoying fan noise, abysmal battery life, and laptops too hot to actually touch. Well, today is the day that we get to see if the Intel curse has finally been lifted, as with me are two of Intel's brand new Meteor Lake laptops. But I value your time, so I'm just gonna tell you the punchline without making you watch this video. Meteor Lake is definitely a good step forward for Intel. It is a decent amount more power efficient than last generation, it delivers better integrated GPU performance, and it accelerates some basic AI tasks. But it doesn't offer any noticeable CPU performance improvements, its product naming is an absolute confusing mess, and it just isn't as revolutionary a product as Apple's M series of processors or AMD's original Zen ones were. So now, if you're interested in why I came to those conclusions, here's the rest of the video. Let me first summarize what Meteor Lake actually is. Basically, it uses a new manufacturing process marketed as Intel 4. Intel 4 is a full node shrink relative to Intel 7, which is what their older 10th to 13th generation of processors used. I'm not a computer engineer, I'm a computer scientist, but from my research what this means is that the change to Intel 4 should have an estimated 20% performance improvement for the same power draw, or a 40% reduction in power for the same performance. So, this manufacturing change alone should go a long way to helping Intel solve its primary issue, which is that their processors require too much power for the performance they deliver. In addition to this, these new Meteor Lake processors finally have new integrated graphics called ARC. Not to be confused with the nightclub from Sydney, Australia that I used to DJ at. Anyway, this replaces the abysmal integrated graphics that we've been served up from Intel for the last several years. And Intel is including a neural processing unit to accelerate some AI tasks, as well as other improvements such as support for newer, faster, low-powered memory. All in. Intel claims that Meteor Lake will offer around 10% improved CPU performance than their prior 13th generation, and 20% better graphics performance. And finally, with Meteor Lake, Intel is rebranding their product stack with a new naming convention, and boy is it extremely confusing. Seriously, it's like they're not only trying to compete with AMD and performance, but also in who has the most misleading and confusing product naming. Previously, their processors were designated U, P, H, or HX, which referred to the series of processor and the approximate performance they would deliver. U for low-powered ultrabooks, all the way up to HX for huge performance-focused laptops. Then they had their legacy i5, i7 designations, which referred to more modest performance differences within those series. This caused ridiculous situations where an i5 from Intel's H series would outperform an i7 from their U series. Meteor Lake is changing the branding of the processor to Core Ultra, and they are getting rid of the generation number which was previously at the beginning of their product name like 13th. They are instead restarting it and calling it Series 1. Within Series 1, just like before, there will be ranges denoted by the letter at the end of the product name. An H for high performance laptops and then a U for smaller lower powered ultrabooks. So they're getting rid of the P series, which was an in-between series which I think is positive, as all these processors support variable wattage anyway. Within these series there will be 5, 7 and 9 models. These are pretty much the same thing as the older i5 and i7 designations, just without the i. Here is a look at the full Core Ultra H series product stack. The main difference is that the Core Ultra 5 has 4 performance and 8 efficient cores, whereas the Core 7 and 9 get 2 extra performance cores. The other differences are more minor clock increases as you go up the range. Compared to last year's 13th Gen H series, this is the same number of P and E cores, and they have very similar clock speeds. So, without an architecture change to these cores, which as I understand these don't have, I'd expect very similar CPU performance. Additionally, these Meteor Lake processors do include two new LPE cores, which are rumoured to support some basic tasks when the computer is asleep. I'm very interested to see how these will be used. Anyway, on the surface, their product stack seems to be just as complex as it was before. But here's where the wheels completely fall off the car. Apparently Intel are also releasing a 14th generation of processors for laptops around CES time. This is a Raptor Lake refresh of their 13th generation, which uses their older Intel 7 manufacturing process. Apparently this will be confusingly branded as Intel Core, i.e. without Ultra in the name. 
If the rumor mill is correct, these will come in variants for very large, powerful laptops as an update to the 13th gen HX processors, as well as a line for Ultrabooks. So, I believe consumers will probably have no idea what they are buying. Seriously, even I found describing these products to you in a way that is somewhat understandable extremely difficult. And guys, I'm just going to be honest here, it took me days to write this script, and I do this professionally. Intel must simplify their product stack and take a page out of Apple's book with their M series. Finally, as per everything in the tech space right now, every bit of marketing to do with these new Meteor Lake laptops had AI plastered everywhere. Which is annoying, because none of my viewers have ever requested a laptop for better AI. Most just want laptops from Intel to stop having fan noise, have decent battery life. So. I'd recommend Intel's marketing department focus on those aspects rather than attaching themselves to a bandwagon. Anyway, after five minutes of trying to do Intel's marketing department's job for them, let's see how Media Lake actually performs. As I said, I have two of these laptops, MSI's brand new and simply named Prestige 16 AI Evo B1M, which we've affectionately named Jim. Jim is powered by the new Intel Core Ultra 7 155H processor. This processor is really the replacement to the i7-13700H, which is a very common processor found in high-performance laptops that have decent cooling solutions. And then we have one of our favourite laptops from 2023, the Asus ZenBook 14, also powered by the same Meteor Lake processor. And stating the obvious, but on YouTube, sometimes it needs to be stated, we only have a sample size of two laptops here, with very early Meteor Lake firmware and drivers. So expect the performance may be improved over time. Plus Jim, our MSI Prestige, is actually a manufacturer's sample and far from a production version. So please treat our results as directionally correct. All laptops were run on their performance modes to show you what they are truly capable of. For Geekbench 6, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, when comparing these Meteor Lake laptops to the older Intel 13700H, which they replace, it just isn't any faster. In fact, compared to that processor in the Inspiron 16 Plus, it's actually a little slower. And these new Intel Meteor Lake laptops are completely destroyed by Apple's M3 Pro and Max processors, but it did beat out AMD Zen 4 in multi-core in this test. Let's now switch to Cinebench R24, which tests how the laptop performs under full load. For the ZenBook 14, it is better in single core than our ZenBook 14 from 2023. But for multi core, it's around the same. And FYI, please note, our ZenBook from 2023 uses an older Ryzen Zen 3 processor, not the Zen 4, and it's a U series one, not the higher powered H series. Our Legion Slim 7 does use the Zen 4 H series processor, and it is a lot faster than the ZenBook 14, but it's about the same as the larger Prestige 16, Jim. And in this test, the new Prestige 16 does handily beat out the Intel 13th Gen H series laptops that it replaces. But Meteor Lake is still way behind Apple's M3 in single core and way, way, way behind the MacBook Pro 16 with M3 Max in multi core. Now, let's see how the processor performs under a long running sustained workload. To do this, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 10 minutes. This looks very promising. Both Meteor Lake laptops were able to sustain their full performance over time. Please note though, on Cinebench R24, it's such a long running benchmark that we just don't see big performance drops when compared to a single run. So we did this test on the older Cinebench R23 as well. Here you can see a much lower drop in performance over time versus their prior generation. All right, let's take a look at the all important power draw. Here we can see that the max power draw of the Meteor Lake ZenBook 14 is very low compared to most laptops on this list, which explains its poor performance compared to Jim, our Meteor Lake equipped MSI Prestige 16. But it isn't all that different to the prior generation ZenBook 14, and it's more wattage than HP's Pavilion Plus 14 with Ryzen Zen 4U, and the MacBook Pro with the M3 Pro chip. The Prestige on the other hand draws a similar amount of power to last year's model and way less than the Inspiron 16 Plus. When we combine these results together to see overall performance efficiency, you can see that indeed Intel Media Lake is more efficient than its predecessor, substantially so at lower wattage like in the ZenBook 14. This is in line with what we've seen from Intel, AMD and Apple processors in 2023. Heck, you can see it on our graph. The lower wattage Zen 4 U series in the Pavilion Plus is very efficient, as is the MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro. Let's now see how the improved efficiency of Media Lake actually plays out. When it comes to heat you actually feel from the chassis when the laptop is under full load, the lower powered ZenBook 14 scores well, and is an improvement from last year's model. The MSI Prestige on the other hand is a hot mess, and way hotter than Apple's MacBook Pros. The processor inside also gets crazy hot. 
we measured 110 degrees on our MSI Prestige with Meteor Lake. But there is a chance that this is just because our monitoring software isn't updated for these new processors. So please take this result with a grain of salt. Fan noise when under max load is significantly less on both laptops than their prior models, which is good. But way more than a MacBook with M3 Pro. Looking at heat you feel, the MSI with Meteor Lake gets insanely hot. I'd say MSI is just feeding this processor too much power for what this chassis can effectively cool. Battery life of the ZenBook is a step back from last year's older AMD model unfortunately, and even the Prestige, it isn't that good either. It appears better than last year's model, but that's because this new model has a larger battery. And if you're wondering if either of these laptops' performance drops when on battery power, they don't. Finally, the new Intel Arc integrated graphics. It's very good, and a massive step forward in performance. In TimeSpy, which is a common gaming benchmark, it's almost twice the performance of the prior generation, and two-thirds of the performance of a dedicated RTX 3050 Ti. And that was a mid-range dedicated graphics from 2022. It also substantially beat out the Radeon 780M, which is the integrated graphics in the AMD Zen 4U processor in our HP Pavilion Plus. Lastly, I do want to touch on the neural core performance. Although I don't have any benchmarks to show you, I did see a demo of the common background blur effect that people use on Zoom calls. You know, the one that hides your messy background. I can confirm that I witnessed the general processor usage go way down, and instead, the neural processor was being utilized. So with hardware acceleration here, I would expect that heat and fan noise when doing something like that will be reduced. Please note, your software may take time to make use of this new hardware. All right, let's wrap. Meteor Lake is a good step forward for Intel. It is moderately more power efficient than their prior generation. It gives you substantially better integrated graphics and a neural processing unit. But it certainly isn't the huge step forward in terms of power efficiency that Intel really needed to compete with Apple and comprehensively beat AMD. And as per all laptop processors right now, these Meteor Lake laptops are more efficient at lower wattage, which is what we saw with the ZenBook 14 versus the Prestige. Overall, what I worry is that laptop manufacturers will feed these processors too much power to win benchmarks, rather than use their modest efficiency improvements to reduce fan noise, heat, and extend battery life, which was demonstrated today between the ZenBook and the Prestige. And I just want to end with this. I was a little surprised that the results we saw today just didn't seem to fully deliver on the results I would have expected from the change in the manufacturing process, nor the results that Intel promised us that they would deliver. Well, that's all for today, folks. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button, as we have a lot of reviews of Meteor Lake laptops coming. And let's hope with new firmware, updates to software, updates to drivers, we see more benefits from Meteor Lake in the future. And if you're in the market for a laptop, definitely check out our website as we clearly list all the laptops that we recommend and where to go to get the best deals on them. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.